was a mega church, and Carl Lentz is the celebrity pastor. Carl is so charming. People idolize him. There is a sense that pastors can be hot. He was so special. It was cool. Oh, Carl was this mega superstar. And then he just disappeared. You do not want to be in this chair. Let what happened to Carl Lentz be a warning to all of these so-called Hollywood Christians. So Carl Lentz has been in the news lately, primarily because of a new docu-series that is coming on FX on May 19th. And so I consider Carl Lentz and others like him Hollywood Christians. These are Christians that have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. They love the world more than they love the church. They love the trappings of being a Christian. They love the trappings of being in fellowship with God, but don't want to put in the true work to be a disciple. Now, this is not a video to bash Carl Lentz because I pray for his restoration and from what he's been saying, he is on a path to restoration. Carl is this mega superstar. And then he just disappeared. You do not want to be in this chair. I cannot stress it enough. You really got it. I had some major lies. He said, I have been unfaithful. So you see in this promo that looks like it's going to be a docu-series that really goes into the inner workings of how he ended up where he did in terms of the highs of being the celebrity pastor of New York City, hanging out with Justin Bieber and other celebrities to the lows of being caught up in an affair and having his marriage and his integrity destroy it for all the public to see. And it's unfortunate because a lot of non-Christians are going to use this to talk about the hypocrisy of Christians, but they don't understand that our savior is not a hypocrite. Our God is not a hypocrite. Human beings may commit sin. Human beings may not always live up to the standard that God has for them, but our savior and our Lord and our father is not a hypocrite. And the sad part about it is, in these last days, you're gonna have a lot of people who will flock to ministers like Carl Lentz. For example, Mike Todd. There are a number of people that love to flock to his quote unquote church because it makes them feel good. It tickles their ears. There is no sacrifice. There is no dying to oneself. You know, the Bible talks about, I've been meditating on this, this verse for the past few days. How it talks about, let him who thinks he stand take heed lest he falls. And the next verse talks about there's no temptation that has befallen you except that which is coming to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. That's 1 Corinthians 10, 12 and 13. See, Carl Lentz wasn't in tune with the spirit of God to see that way of escape. Carl Lentz was more in tune with the trappings of being a quote unquote Hollywood Christian, more of the trappings of being a on Oprah, being friends with Bieber, all those kinds of things. And that can happen so easily because the devil can transform himself into an angel of light. The devil is the God of this world. He, he is in charge of this world system. He has all of these riches, quote unquote, at his behest. And he uses those things to get Christians trapped with the idea that they're living for this world instead of living for the next world. Yes, God wants you to be prosperous in this world, but your ultimate aim, ultimate goal is to be living for the next world. And so Carl Lentz talked about this docu-series and some of the other things that has happened to him since he was removed from being a pastor at Hillsong in an open letter that he placed on Instagram today. You see, he talks about how he's starting to focus on fighting for his wife and his children, which is awesome. That is great to see. That is great to see. And how his family has been his only priority, um, how he's being healed. Now, the only thing about it, I pray that the healing power of God is really manifested. That he's not trying to do it himself. That he's not trying to do it in his flesh, in and of himself, but it's truly allowing the healing power of God to be deposited into his spirit, into his soul, and let it manifest itself in his body. And so he talks about that. And then he talks about the documentary. They decided to be a part of this documentary. 
that they did not control. So obviously, based on what he just says here, it's not gonna be a flattering portrayal of them. And he says he hasn't even seen it yet. And so he's not interested in blame shifting or responsibility deflecting. He just focused on his mistakes in the context for what happened to him. And, and that's the thing, you know, when we fall into sin, the Bible talks about how he who is spiritual to come alongside and lift that person up. When a person has fallen, it's our job to pick that person up. Too many Christians love to kick somebody when they're down. That's not our role. Our role is to judge righteously. And when someone has fallen, we are there to pick that person up, bear you one another's burdens that so fulfill the law of Christ. We're there to help each other, not tear each other down. We're all part of the body of Christ, man. We're all together. We're one family, one unit under the Lord. We're one. We're one. He's the head. We're the body. You can't kick somebody else when they're down. No, you lift that brother up, encourage him, pray for him, strengthen him. And you see this happens far too often. Whenever somebody falls, a lot of Christians are there to pour dirt on them, to bury them. And that's not the way we're supposed to be. We're supposed to elevate that person, help that person, encourage that person. Now, it doesn't mean that person to go back to ministry and go back to the position that they had before. But it also doesn't mean that we need to cast that person away. And then he talks about how he's at Transformation Church. And he says he's no longer doing ministry. He says he's not preaching. He's not overseeing anybody. He's just giving his perspective and insight, I guess, as a strategist to Mike Todd. Now, one thing I will say, I, I would really have hope that he would have went to a different kind of church because if you would have went to a church that had a pastor that reflected biblical values more than Mike Todd does, I would have liked that discipleship that would have occurred. I'm not sure, honestly, he would get the discipleship that he would have received if he went to like a Bodie Bauckham or, or John MacArthur or some other ministers that are more seasoned that can actually help him. He went to Mike Todd because Transformation Church is just like Elevation and just like Hillsong. Churches where they have the smoke, churches where they love to, Churches where they love to fake the presence of God, but really don't want his presence. Churches where they love to preach about God, but they don't preach to you and disciple you about who God really is. Per places where people who think they are Christian, they act Christian, but they're not Christian at all. They don't have a real relationship with him because the Bible says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. You have to be led by his spirit in order to be considered a son. And a lot of people that go to these kind of churches are not led by the spirit of God. They're led by their emotions, they're led by their nature, their carnal nature, they're led by what they see. That's what they're led by. They're not led by the spirit of God. And so they may sit in a church, they may think they are a Christian, but actually they're not. And that's the worst kind of people to be. You think that you are a Christian, but your actions belie that fact that you are not a Christian. You have a form of godliness, but you deny the power that up because you want to live your same kind of life. You think you can be a Christian on Sunday and live any kind of way that you want during the rest of the week. You want your will to be done, but not God's will to be done. And that's the difference. It's about how he's been forgiven and those kind of things. And it's great to see. And like I said, I pray for, the, for him. He's a brother. I pray that he's restored. I really do. I pray for him, but he is a warning. Here's a warning to these so-called Hollywood Christians who think it's okay to go hang out with a Beyonce, it's okay to go hang out with a Jay-Z, people that are true with their money, people that are witches, that think it's okay to go to this party and that party and hang out with these people who hate God, who are anti-God, but yet call themselves Christian. Because these kind of Christians are the nominal Christians that the world loves. Because these people never preach about righteousness and truth. They never preach about it. They never talk about it. They talk about God is love. Oh, God is love. God is love. God is love. They never talk about the fact that God is righteous and God is holy. And as a true Christian, as a believer in Jesus Christ, you live a life that is reflective of what the word of God says, not what the world says. So this is a warning. Take Carl Lentz's life, take his rise and fall as a warning to you Hollywood Christians that the same thing can happen to you and you better beware because if you don't straighten yourself out, that judgment is coming for you.